there are mysterious holes in the story of life. Not black holes, not plot holes, knowledge holes, gaps in our understanding so large, they're almost invisible, so foundational, we rarely even think to question them. We say life comes from DNA, and DNA is a code. But that raises a question most people don't stop to ask. If it's a code, who's reading it? If life is just molecules bouncing around in warm puddles, how do those molecules know what to do with a string of letters? Who decided A, T, C, and G should mean anything at all? And why would life need a code in the first place? Some scientists say the code works because the chemistry lines up, the shapes fit, the reactions happen. Others think there's more to it, that the chemistry only works because it's part of a larger system of meaning. So what are we actually seeing when we look at DNA? A molecule or a message? This video explores something strange and quietly radical, the idea that life isn't just chemistry, it's interpretation. That what makes life possible is not just stuff, but meaning. And maybe meaning came first. Let's begin with a thought experiment. Imagine being the first human to draw on a cave wall, to leave behind a mark that stood for something else, a hunt, a spirit, a memory. That's where code begins, when a thing becomes a sign. Even infants do this. A baby hears a bell ring every time milk comes, and soon the bell alone makes them expect food. One thing standing in for another, that's the start of code. But is this just a human thing? Or could nature itself be full of signs waiting to be read? Let's follow that scent, literally. Smell that invisible, emotional, and ancient sense might hold clues to life's earliest attempts to make sense of its surroundings. Before we dive into that though, think about something as ordinary as a string of emojis. Rocket ship galaxy Earth. Without even trying, your brain reaches for meaning. Rocket, moon, Earth, maybe a journey, a feeling, a story. That's your mind recognizing a code. One thing pointing to another. Codes are all around us. Morse code turns dots and dashes into letters. Musical notation turns marks on paper into music. Road signs convert color and shape into instructions. Red means stop. Triangles mean caution. A skull and crossbones warns of poison, whether or not you speak the language. These are systems that rely on shared recognition. And in biology, DNA letters become amino acids, which fold into proteins, the machinery of life. But how does a molecule mean anything? There's no physical law that connects AUG to methionine. That link isn't built into the universe. So where did it come from? Biologist Marcello Barbieri says the genetic code isn't just metaphor. It's a true code, a symbolic system that needs an interpreter. But who or what is doing the interpreting inside a cell? There's no tiny librarian flipping through a DNA manual, no inner voice saying, this part means make insulin. Instead, it's ribosomes and tRNAs doing the work. Molecular machines, mindless and ancient, that somehow managed to follow instructions. T 
tRNAs in particular are fascinating. They're like plug adapters, matching one shape to another, a codon on one end, an amino acid on the other. They don't understand what they're doing, but the match is everything. So how do we get from meaningless molecules to meaningful messages? Barbieri suggests it comes down to function. Evolution found a pattern that worked and built on it. The system didn't need to know what it was doing. It just had to survive. And over time, those survival patterns became meaning systems. Picture a ribosome not as a static diagram, but as a humming, tireless factory. Strands of RNA move through it like ticker tape. Each tRNA arrives like a delivery truck, drops off a cargo, clicks into place. Click, pause, connect. Every second of your life, this is happening inside you. Still, none of these molecules knows anything. No thoughts, no goals. But could this be a kind of language, even without a speaker? Linguist Thomas Sibiak thought the answer lay in a different idea, that biology is communication. All of it, not just humans talking, not just animals making noise, but cells, bacteria, plants, interpreting signs, sending signals, acting on meaning. He called this network the semiosphere, like the atmosphere, but filled with symbols. So what does it mean to live inside a world of meaning? Imagine waking up inside a forest where everything, the ants, the roots, the scent of the air, is part of a giant silent conversation. Trees releasing chemical warnings when attacked by pests. Mushrooms forming underground networks that shuttle nutrients between plants birds calling out to warn of predators. Everything is speaking in its own way. This idea led to a new field, biosemiotics, the study of how life makes and reads meaning. An ant leaves a trail, a bee does a dance, a bacterium swims toward sugar. These are not just reactions, their responses, and they suggest something powerful. Life didn't evolve meaning as an afterthought. It may have started there. Which brings us back to smell. Smell isn't just sensory, it's emotional. One sniff of sunscreen and you're eight again. A whiff of a loved one's sweater and your heart stumbles. Smell skips language and dives straight into memory. What's going on under the hood? Molecules float in the air. Your nose has about 400 types of receptors. They catch these molecules like puzzle pieces. But what you perceive isn't just the shape. It's the combination, the pattern, the context. Lemon doesn't always mean lemon. In a cleaning product, it means fresh. In spoiled food, it might mean danger. Same molecule, different meaning. Because meaning is never fixed, it lives in context. And context isn't only about the present, it's tied to experience. The smell of pine might remind one person of winter holidays. To another, it could signal cleaning fluid or the woods behind a childhood home. So what does it mean if our oldest sense is also our most interpretive? Maybe smell wasn't just one of life's first senses. Maybe it was life's first way of reading the world. 
Imagine early cells floating in primordial soup. Certain molecules drift by, some bring energy, some bring danger. Over time, those responses become memories, preferences, triggers. That's not just survival, that's interpretation. And if interpretation is already happening that early, what else could life do with code? We now know the genetic code isn't universal. Mitochondria, the energy factories inside our cells, use a slightly different one. And that opens the door to something wild. The code can change. Within your body, there are even more codes. The splicing code edits RNA. The sugar code marks cell identities. The histone code helps decide which genes switch on. The immune system recognizes shape patterns on viruses as foreign, effectively reading molecular fingerprints. These systems are like dialects within the language of life. They didn't come from laws. They evolved, and that means they can shift, recombine, even go extinct. Some researchers believe these layered codes were the turning point in evolution. They allowed cells to specialize, cooperate, and eventually form multicellular organisms. Not just more complex life, but coordinated, conscious, coded life. And these codes didn't emerge overnight. They stacked over generations, layers upon layers, each building on the last, like language growing from grunts to grammar, like music evolving from rhythm to harmony. So here's the next question. What happens when we stop just reading the code and start writing it? In 2010, a synthetic genome was placed into a cell. The cell accepted it, lived, reproduced. For the first time, life was born of a computer file. Since then, we've gone further. Scientists have created bacteria with expanded genetic alphabets, built new proteins using amino acids nature never knew, developed mRNA vaccines, messages written in code, delivered directly into our cells. We've designed enzymes from scratch, programmed yeast to produce biofuels, even built programmable life forms like xenobots, tiny blobs of frog cells that can move, heal, and carry cargo. Could we write entirely new biological languages, ones with properties evolution never imagined? If we write the code, who interprets it? If the code is being written by us, does the interpretation belong to us too? Or have we simply nudged evolution in a new direction? And what about life that didn't begin here? When we look for aliens, we search for signs of our own biology, of carbon, water, oxygen. But what if we're asking the wrong question? If life is interpretation, maybe the core trait isn't chemistry. It's code. Maybe alien life uses electrical fields or magnetic pulses. Maybe it exists in crystalline structures that hum instead of divide. Maybe it sends messages through light or gravity. There's even speculation that complex plasma formations in space with electric fields and self-organizing behavior could exhibit lifelike properties. Could those be overlooked forms of life? If so, we won't find it by looking for molecules. We'll have to look for meanings. That's the idea behind semiosignatures. Signs that something, somewhere, is turning inputs into information. Not just biosignatures, but signals of thought. 
And to recognize them, we'll have to recognize our own codes more clearly. Which leads to one final comparison between us and the systems we've built. We've created AI that mimics human expression. Machines that generate language, paint, compose music. But does a machine that says I love you understand what love means? I processes symbols, but does it interpret them? An algorithm doesn't miss the smell of rain. It doesn't associate coffee with a childhood kitchen. It doesn't cry when it hears a certain melody. It can simulate understanding, but it doesn't sit inside meaning. And yet, it's closing the gap. Generative models can mimic our voices, predict our gestures, and answer our questions in fluent prose. So what separates us? That might be the final distinction. Not memory, not intelligence, but interpretation. So, what did we discover today? Life runs on codes, but those codes aren't physical laws. They're agreements, evolutionary handshakes between pattern and consequence. Meaning may be more fundamental than matter. The reason anything works at all may come down to whether something can be read. We are readers, and now, writers. The interpreters who ask not just what life is, but what it means. And maybe one day, when we finally do meet something alive out there, we'll recognize it, not by its shape or its atoms, but by the quiet signature of understanding. If this video sparked something in you, I'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment. What's a code you live by? A signal only you notice? And if you want more winding down stories that connect science to what it means to be human, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, stay curious.